Hello, this is Carbon Water. Uh, this is kind of like a mini tutorial thing. It's kind of like how you get smooth lines and how to uh, draw accordingly. Because usually what you'll do is you'll start with your uh, your basic sketches and then you draw over them accordingly. And like well, a lot of time I've seen some people, um, what they'll do, they draw their sketches and then they'll just draw over them as is. Uh, that's not what you do. Because what you want to do is you want to change this and you want to make it look like this. Uh, so I'll give you a good idea of how to do that and uh, how to do a smooth animation accordingly. So we'll take it step by step. Uh, so this is a completed part I've done. So maybe Where he goes. So maybe Just moving from A to B, very simple stuff. So yeah, so more or less what I've done in here is I've taken my uh, two keyframes, I made a keyframe in the middle, right about here, and then I've drawn accordingly around those keyframes. So I'll show you how to do that exactly for the line here, with this here. Still don't like dudes. Yes, this is what I'm working on currently. Uh, I'll unlock this, I'll relock that. So I'll make a blank keyframe here. Uh, we'll just make a blank keyframe on every major keyframe. Why not? Uh, so let's see here. But I still don't. Yeah, so this isn't really a major movement, so. Still... Yes, yeah, so I want it to be around about. ending around about here. And then starting around about. here. Uh, yeah, so we'll draw over those accordingly. Uh, so what I usually do is I make it so that I can see under my, uh, see through my current layer. I actually make that a different color, just so it's a bit easier to see. I'll make it red. There we are. I usually do have a very uh, light color accordingly. Uh, so what you want to do is when you want to smooth out your keyframes, keep them nice and smooth. What you want to do is zoom in and have a uh, appropriately decent uh zoom radius. I usually do something different for each zoom radius, I guess. So we'll go and we'll try like 125. Yeah, maybe a bit closer. I might do 130. 130? Mm. Yeah, maybe something a bit closer as well. Because the closer you are, the thinner your lines will be in the long run, so you want to have something that's kind of kind of decent. We'll do... i just do 150. Yeah, I'll do that. looks nice. Yeah, so uh, usually um, I'm working in... in um, I'm working at this resolution. I'm working nice and close. Because as you can see over here, I put 150 over here, and that means that that's how close I was working on it at the time, because that's for when I go back and I do lip syncing. Uh, because when you're working on a project and you save, it'll default to the regular resolution, so I usually write the number so I can know where to zoom in, so I can continue, so I can have consistent lines. Uh, I'll change this to paint behind, and usually run, run with uh, brush 2. You can run with brush 3, or even something bigger if you want, depending on you want. Uh, so we'll just draw over this real quick. I'll just speed this up in post, so it's not going to take as long. Okay, so there's that done. Yeah, so what I've done here is I've drawn over the uh, the drawing at a more zoomed in status, and I've changed this accordingly because I'm gonna I've changed the color of this because I'm gonna change this later on, so I made it a different color. So as you can see already, the lines look way smoother than what they were before, because as you can see that's how they were, and this is how they are now. So it's more or less tricking the program because if you zoom in 
they're not really that smooth, but if you zoom out, they look kind of smooth. So it's more or less zooming in and making it look like it's smoother than it actually is. That's the whole idea. Yeah, I'm not sure if anybody else does it like this. I'm kind of self-taught. I haven't really looked at my own tutor any other tutorials or whatnot. Uh, but this is how it works for me, and hopefully it can work out for you too. So what we'll do is we'll draw over the second keyframe. Okay, so we've drawn over our two keyframes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so what we want to do now is, since we've got keyframe 1 and 2, it depends how quick we want the movement to go and uh, if we need to use any smears or whatnot accordingly. Because uh, smears are great for fast movement if you want quick, sharp, fast movement, but he's currently not moving that much, so I think we won't need a smear. Because I believe it was when I very first found out about smears, I started using smears for everything and that was not a good idea, so... <laughs> Uh, if you look at my earlier work, if you look at part one of the Persona 4 animated series in particular, I used a lot of smears and they're all over the place. Uh, so we want to use an onion skin so we know where, uh, where part one and part two of our uh, keyframes are. And what I usually do is I usually change the color accordingly so, so I know what's what. So I'll make this one red. I'll change this color equivalent. Oops. And number two, I'll make blue. Usually just two very contrasting colors. And you see how I've made the uh, the secondary color that I want to keep different. I've made it green. And on the other one, I've made purple. So just to keep them separated as well, just so I don't accidentally mess up or something. Yeah, so it's now it's e very easily to tell which one's which, instead of just having black on black. Uh, so we want to zoom in again and draw, just draw in between. Uh, it's usually, for a, for a motion, you probably want, usually want it to start, um, you want it to start quickly and you want it to end uh, slowly. So you feel like, you know, with movement, if you know you, you notice somebody like moving the hand or whatnot, it always starts quickly and ends slowly, but I guess it depends on the uh, on the type of movement that you want and the object accordingly, but it's usually start fast and end slow. I usually compare it to a uh, what is it, a car, like it starts up quickly, you know, it gets to the middle, it moves its fastest, and then it slows down at the very end, so I'm just gonna draw in the middle here Right, so I'll speed this up as well. Okay, so there we go. There's, there's our middle frame. Uh, and let's see here. Let's have a look. If I turn the keyframes off... So you can see we're starting to make some motion, but we still have a little bit more to go. Uh, so more or less what you need to do is you need to draw frame here, frame here, frame here, frame here, frame here. Uh, just to get that slow movement of motion. Uh, yeah, so this is usually not recommended uh, the way that I do things because I work on ones. Uh, where regular animation is usually run on twos. Traditional animation, like a lot of like Western animation, and a lot of like Japanese animation is on threes. So uh, you usually want to do mostly a combination of ones and twos, but I usually just use ones because it gives it like that nice slow fluid movement. Uh, yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a frame here, which will be in between this drawing and this drawing, and then I'll do the same with this one, so I'll do that. Okay, there we are. 
So there we have our two startup frames. So as you can see, the animation starting to look a little bit smoother. Still don't like. Yes, yeah, so the start animation animations are there. But we still got our um, our slow down animations or our ease out animations. So. So it kind of jumps from there to there, but we need to draw more frames there. So we need to draw three more frames here to make it slow down. And then there'll be one standard movement. Yeah, and you don't need to be perfect with your frames. Like, you could be, like, nice and loose. Because uh, think of it this way. Like, every frame is going to be on screen for one twenty-fourth of a second or, you know, two twenty-fourths of a second. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Don't Don't treat it like, you know your major work of art or something like that so uh, yeah so I'll do these three um, so I'll cut here I'll draw these three and then I'll uh, and then I'll meet you on the other side All right. okay yeah so we're done with that uh, yes yeah, so this is a full uh, full animated uh, movement sequence I guess uh, still don't like do still don't so from point A to point B. Yeah, I might want to put some more frames here. But regardless, this is a good even idea. Still don't like. Yeah, because the more, uh, if you want to make it slow down a little bit further, you can always put more frames on the end and then draw in between as you need to. Uh, Still don't like. Yeah, I usually don't like when it like has a hard stop. I might have to draw some more frames there later on. But uh, yeah, what I'll do after this is I'll um, is I'll color this in accordingly. Actually, I'll save this. Uh, yeah, I'll save it now. So one second, just saving. Always takes a minute. Slow computer, unfortunately. And that looks like the program's gonna crash, but it isn't. It should be fine. There we are. Uh, yeah, so I'll open uh, my cheat sheet of uh, of colors. Let's see where it is. There it is. Yeah, so this is what I use. Yeah, this is uh, more or less like the colors for every character. Here's all the glasses car car uh, colors. Here's the here's for the text boxes. This is more or less what I go to if I need uh, colors for various uh, characters. So what you can do is you can take the uh, the dropper tool and you can grab any dropper color you want. Um, but alternatively, what you can also do, you can hold down the uh, the fill color um, color and then you can drag. And then you can choose whatever color you want, and I'll pick it up. So, for example, pick up blue, pick up uh, pick up black, pick up gray, pick up skin color, like whatever you need. Really, it's just a quicker way of doing that. Uh, so, what do we need? Actually, I'll, I'll color this in uh, black. So, I'm to do it later. Color it in just like that. Oops. And we'll do it uh, with the finishing frame as well. Just call it in real quick. Yep, yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, so what I want is I want the jacket color, so I'll grab that. And then I usually just draw underneath, because I'm, because uh, cause right here you can select um, the brush mode that you want, and I usually do uh, paint behind, so I'll paint behind any other car, any other brushes, uh, any strokes that I have on screen, so it won't go over, it'll always go under. So uh, you want to do that with every frame. Yeah, you don't have to be perfect, because these are going to be off screen anyway, like nobody's going to see them, so. Like I can just draw, like, you know, a little something, for example. Say hi, but we won't worry about that. You can just hide little Easter eggs off screen that nobody will ever see. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, next frame. Like so, and then next frame. There we are. And then we go backwards, so we fill in accordingly. There's more, there's probably a faster way to do this, but. Again, I am self-taught, and this is the way I've been doing things for quite a while. Yeah, so then we'll grab the the shirt color, and then we'll do the same thing again. 
you can probably um, just draw along the bottom with one color. You don't have to do this with two different colors, but this is the way I, I do things. Probably doesn't even really matter, but... Okay, now we color in accordingly. I'll, I'll do this with the skull as well for the uh, the eye sockets. Yep. And then we grab. Uh, oops. And then we grab the white for the skull. And then we change. Actually, I'll zoom in for this because I have to change the lines as well. Yes, this is the whole reason why I made it this a different color. Yeah, usually if I want to change something, I want to make it a, a different color. Then black, I'll, uh, I'll make it a different line color so I can change it later accordingly. And it helps out if they're interfering with the uh, the black line colors as well. Yeah, this is more or less good for like... When is uh, when there's something you don't want to make a a solid uh, black color, good for like fabrics and whatnot. Just, you know, give it a little bit more blending detail. Uh, and then we want to grab the skin color. Yeah, I more or less just took the protagonist and then changed the color because I couldn't be bothered, like just drawing a brand new character. Figured it more or less it's the same color anyway, a character anyway, so. Also, this may happen sometimes when you try to fill in, it'll bleed out. Uh, into the next range of uh, area. So what you want to do is you want to just try to fill every gap, and because we're uh, we're painting underneath, we can cover everything. Yeah, it's usually I used to go in and I used to figure out exactly where it is, but now it's easier just to do everything, just in case. And then uh, any color, and it's fine. Just way less uh, time because you have to zoom in and be like, where is it? And then we do the hair color. And there we go. There's a fully completed motion sequence. I might fool around with this later to make it a bit more smooth now, but this is more or less for the demo. Still don't like. Yeah. Still don't like dudes. Yes, yeah, so. Still don't yeah, so if I, was, if I was working on the sequence any longer, I'd definitely make, you know, put like a, maybe an extra frame in there just so it slows down a bit more. Yeah, okay. So that's more or less it. Uh, hope this helped out. Hope you enjoyed. And, uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Alright, I think that's it. Uh, yeah, check out, um, yeah, check out my animations if you haven't already. Some uh, good stuff, and I'm always working on more stuff, even though you can, you know, can easily tell why it takes me a long time, but, uh, yeah. Until then, I'll see you then. Goodbye.